you're only as good as your people. It, you, you, you could be S- Steve Jobs, mm-hmm. but if you don't hire all the greatest people around you, you're not going to ever create Apple. Yeah. And, you know, that doesn't get enough attention out there. You yeah. just you just know the name. You know the Elon Musk, the yeah. Steve Jobs, yeah. whoever. Um, but it, it is truly the people. I, I credit our success to everyone around me. They are doing the work. You know, I, I'm at the top of leading on vision and keeping people accountable in execution. But, but, but at the end of the day, it, it is the right people in the right seats for the right amount of time. And sometimes there's a perfect time for someone mm. to get on the bus and off the bus. Yeah. What was the biggest hiring mistake you made? You don't have to say the individual's name. Maybe His name, Maybe, yeah. he's in this room. No, I'm t- <laughs> hey, so welcome to the podcast. Super excited to have my friend, David Tell, CEO of Agentology. Many of you have probably heard about this company. They are lightning hot. And yes, for the record, one of the 55 companies that I was super proud to invest in early on. So David, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, so on this show, I really like to get a little behind the scenes on sort of the entrepreneurial mindset. Then I've got some industry questions I want to hit you up on. But, you know, for the people that have not met you before, uh, give us a little background on, on you. Maybe talk about your brother, some of the businesses you guys have started, and then we'll get into agentology. Is that cool? Absolutely. So fire away. So I, uh, you know, I, I went to UCLA for electrical engineering, actually, mm-hmm. and, you know, switched to economics in my last couple of years yep. um, to the huge disappointment to my parents. Sure, <laughs> sure. They wanted me to be the first engineer in the family. Yes. But I, I was just very entrepreneurial and I wanted to get into the business route. Yeah. Um, my best friends were in the film school. And so I actually got involved in, in, in that world and okay. was in the film industry for a few years. Interesting. Um, what, so, year, what year was this? Uh, 2004. Okay. Something around that. Good, good time. Right uh, before, uh, right before uh, the fun times yeah, began. A simpler time. Yes. Uh, and had a lot of fun. We made a movie, got distributed, went nationwide. Every, the, every blockbuster. Have you seen Anchorman? Yes. It, it wasn't that one, but it, it's called, <laughs> it's called Stone and Ed. Stone and Please Ed. Please don't Google it. I um, am absolutely, <laughs> someone on my team right now, Google Stone and Ed. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so we I think we were the straw that broke uh, Blockbuster's uh, back. It was your um, fault, yes. it was, we, were, we were the last the yes. last straw. Uh, but it w- went everywhere. Um, we did not make our money back on it, though. Sure. Um, and right around that time, um, you know, a few years into that, my uncle, who is a big real estate developer in Mexico, mm-hmm. said he yes. was going to start developing in, in San Diego. Interesting. So I got really excited and got my license to w- wanting to go work with him in kind of development. Yes. Um, right after I got my license, like two weeks later, you know, Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, oh, yeah. the Dominoes, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you great, remember that time? Great timing. Good times. And it, it actually, okay, it yeah. actually was. I know a lot of people that got started at that time that yeah. are some of the most successful people I know today because all the best companies started in a downturn. I, Facebook I, I included, credit, right? I credit yep. a lot of my resilience to that because yep. I got started right at that yes. point when everything yes. just started going down. Yes. We don't wish that no. ever, No. but we know it happens. Yeah, yes. it happens. And it was obviously really, really terrible. Um, for a lot of people and families. And so I, yep. I, I got in as everyone started to get kind of foreclosed on. Yeah. And, you know, I, be, I became an agent. It was a tough time. I, I joined a boutique brokerage, mm-hmm. um, quickly rose to the top. In my first year, I became the top selling uh, agent in that brokerage. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was very marketing forward. I was experimenting like crazy. Yeah. I was doing all sorts of weird stuff to market myself. Mm-hmm. But a lot, some of them didn't work. Most of them didn't work. Sure. A couple of them really worked. Yeah. And what worked? The, the one that worked the best was, you know, someone told me that I should start the official downtown real estate newsletter. And I oh, said, yeah. well, how do, you, how do you become the official? And they go, well, you just start the official downtown newsletter. Exactly. And so I did. I just started the official downtown real estate newsletter. And lo and behold, it worked. And I got, you know, uh, through different marketing and channels and email blasts and things like mm-hmm. that. At the time, it was easier. Yeah. Um, I got tens of thousands of people to follow because downtown San Diego was starting to kind of rise. Yes. A lot of new buildings. It was yep. really transforming. Even, even during the downturn, yeah. there was a lot of buildings up that were either becoming rentals. Yeah. People were buying those as, as distressed assets. It was still a very great place to buy. Yeah. And, wow. and so And so this gave me a huge following and mm-hmm. people who just started reaching out to me. And what I started to do was I started to post like foreclosures of the week, top yeah. foreclosures closures of the week. Yep. It got so popular that I had to put together foreclosure tours. Yes. You remember that? People Absolutely. Who would print, I didn't do the buses, but I did a yeah, van. Yeah, so all over Vegas, Arizona, the foreclosure yeah, buses. exactly. Yep. So I yep. was doing that locally in, in downtown San Diego, Smart. mostly walking because it's very walkable downtown. Yeah. And so did that, did really, really well and sold a lot of properties mm-hmm. and, and became a broker uh, two years later, as soon as I could. I became and a how broker. how old were you at this point? Uh, I guess I was 26. 
Okay. So pretty ambitious for a 26 year old. I yeah. love it. Yeah. So you I, uh, become a broker. Became a broker. I start, uh, uh, I start recruiting agents mm -hmm. and I was a terrible, terrible broker. I, 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 I didn't know how to train them because I was kind of self-taught. Yeah. I, I hadn't done a lot of the things I hadn't, yeah. I hadn't actually gone through, you know, I, I had somewhat of, of early success with some of these marketing tactics yep. that it kind of blinded me to how much I needed to train different people, new yes. people. So I was just bringing on anyone who would sign on with me. Mm -hmm. And I was not very supportive. I wasn't able to coach them up. And I ultimately didn't succeed that much as a broker as much as I did as a self kind of individual guy. Yes. Um, one of the things that 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 I was doing at the time was I was buying a lot of leads on a lot of the portals. You know, yep. ZillaRealtor.com sure. were just coming around. They haven't very been around forever. Very inexpensive. Very inexpensive back then. That yeah. was a five cent click for a wine, exactly. right? Gary V talks exactly. about exactly. Same thing in real estate. And so I was buying a lot of leads. Mm -hmm. I was giving them to my agents. They weren't doing a very good job of following up with them. Yeah. I and by the way, I thought this was kind of normal. I, I didn't even think much of it at first. I would ask them, "Hey, how did it go with that lead I sent you?" Yeah. And they would say, "Well, I I I'm definitely going to email them later." Um, oh, great. Cool. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> I would uh, ask another agent, how did it go with that lead? And they'd say, well, I left them a voicemail, but they haven't called me back. So they must just not be interested. Yeah. You know, one attempt, right? Um, I would then start calling some of the leads. We're in like 2009, I'm guessing right yeah, now. Exactly. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is exactly <laughs> where, I mean, I'm like, speed to lead people. They're like, what's that? Right? Let me write that down. Speed, speed to lead. To that, lead. Has a re that has a real yes. jingle. Um, you know, all, all of that. Yeah. So I saw really firsthand that, yeah. that, that need to, yes. that need for speed <laughs> yeah. to lead. Yes. Um, and, and really I, I didn't see it as, as my agents necessarily being lazy or anything. I just saw it as, as they didn't really have the systems in place, the training, yeah. To do a lot of, they didn't know the impact, you know, making six to eight to 12 attempts had yeah. texting not just calling all of that. You yeah. know, it, it was, it was kind of it a new, wasn't, it wasn't commonplace. It, it was not commonplace. No. In fact, texting no. someone was kind of weird back yes. in the day. Yeah. It was like a little too personal. And, and over email, now calling over is too calling. personal. Yeah, exactly. Now it's calling abrasive. is like, what are you, what are you calling yeah. me? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> text me. No one answers their phone anymore. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so that, that's where my interest in kind of solving problems in real estate yes. sparked. Around the, this was still a time when foreclosures were at a, at a real high, and my my brother and I, Avi, who's mm -hmm. a, who's my my best friend, my brother, my co-founder yeah. for for all these businesses, we started a, a a a website, a directory called REO Industry Directory, mm -hmm. that would connect banks, asset managers to the banks, with local agents to help them connect and sell their foreclosure assets. Yes. Um, as a market, and that, and that did really well. It was obviously very timely, sure. and and it was a good service because it helped. The banks didn't know what to do with all this yes. stuff. You remember, and, yep. and agents, th these were the listings that were selling, and, yep. and we were helping them with that. Um, as the market started to improve, and there were fewer people underwater, uh, fewer people foreclosing, but banks were starting to push short sales. Mm -hmm. And we, we then pivoted to helping not the banks, but helping underwater homeowners mm -hmm. avoid foreclosure through a short sale. And so we started Short Sale Agent Finder. And we helped thousands of people over the coming years, over now, the following that, years. Was that like a certification or was that, hey, I'm underwater, this is where I find an agent that has already someone else's certification? We 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 created our own certification in partnership okay. with Five Star yep. at the time. Smart. Um, and, and we created our own. So we sold a certification and then they were marked as a specialist short sale specialists yep. in our system in that zip code in that market. And we would market this to, to homeowners in, in different markets that we knew were specifically hit hard mm -hmm. and say, hey, there, there's a better way. You don't have to foreclose. We can help you through a short sale and all of the benefits that come through that, yeah. um, which we don't have to relive an, an, now. An but, educational process versus uh, just, you know, yeah. fill out this form and we're going to sell yeah. that lead to somebody. And, and by the way, some of these banks will let you rent back from them. And, and yeah. there's a lot of programs. Yes. And, and it was... It, it was the first time in my life that I felt really, really good about what we were doing. Yeah. We were helping people avoid foreclosure. Yeah. Yes. And I felt really, really good about it. Um, as the market continued to evolve uh, or to improve and fewer people were underwater, yep. thanks Obama improving the economy, uh, everything started to, to come up. We were like, what are we going to do now? <laughs> yeah. so, so we just kind of expanded what we were doing to help all buyers and sellers mm -hmm. uh, meet local agents who specialize in those markets. Because again, it was the whole thing of... You know, don't work with every, any agent you know. Work with some, work with an agent that specializes in La Jolla or mm -hmm. in downtown. Yep. You know, so um, or in Phoenix or in Chicago wherever or in it, Albuquerque, right? And, and, and not just Phoenix, but that. like in that neighborhood in of Phoenix, course, of right? Course. There's so many areas, or yeah. North, South, Scottsdale, all that kind of stuff. So it, it was important for us, and and that went really well as, as well. And so that that got our foot in the door into helping connect 
agents with with uh, uh, consumers, buyers mm-hmm. and sellers, um, in a more meaningful way across kind of all markets in all conditions. Yes. Um, from there, w- w- one of the things we we were doing at the time was we were qualifying the leads before we gave them to an agent. We mm-hmm. were we we wanted to differentiate ourselves from all the other lead gen companies out there. It's a mm-hmm. jungle of lead gen companies at the give time. Give us give us a sense of timing on this. What year is this? Man, this is. Uh, like 2012, okay. 13 maybe? That was, that was really early for the sort of industrialization of ISAs or yeah. OSAs or pre-qualifiers versus just we were, name, email, cell phone, go. We were probably one of the first, if not the first, to yeah. really start to do this. Yep. And it, our model at the time was we, we would generate interested buyers and sellers that wanted to connect with a local agent, mm-hmm. and we would hand them off in exchange for a referral fee. It was licensed as a brokerage so that we can make a referral fee on yeah. it. Um, and were you fr- arbing the arb? Were you like buying Zillow leads and then? Well, no, we had our own uh, page, myagentfinder.com, Got it. where we were driving okay. traffic so, to. Yeah. So back then, it was our own all, brand. Uh, PPC, Google, exactly. Right, Bing, Just whoever else. Find the best agent in yep. Miami. Got it. Best agent in Phoenix. Yeah. Right. Um, generating these leads, and at first we would just hand them did straight do, over. Did you do Craigslist? No. Okay. Back pages. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, someone's going to be mad at me right now because I always get this like, stop interrupting them. I'm like, we're having a conversation, people. Um, he doesn't interrupt. Uh, what? Um, <laughs> so, so no Craigslist. No, no all, Craigslist. Yeah, just all Google pay per click and all just the sort of more PPC. typical. Yeah. All, all PPC. Yep. So we're driving traffic, generating leads, giving them straight to real estate agents, yep. waiting for them to close them. Yeah. And and send us a check on their own accord. Not going to happen. Um, that went okay, but we knew there was a lot of upside. Yeah. Um, our youngest brother, Aton, had just graduated mm-hmm. University of Michigan, and okay. he joined the company. Okay. And he was in tra- he was in charge of tracking these leads and making sure we were getting paid for closings. Yeah. And we were just like four or five people at the time. Yeah. Like, and we. He, he, he was getting frustrated that he would call these leads, much how I was doing in the past. He would call these leads and say, no one ever contacted me. Yeah. Um, and Leads that we'd already given leads out to Leads that agents. we'd given to an agent. Yeah. And he's like, man, we're leaving so much money on the table. And yeah. so what he started to do was he started to, as soon as a lead was generated, he would pick up the phone and call them yeah. and qualify them and then, and then set up an appointment for the agent, set up a real callback time or a, or, or a physical mm-hmm. you know, face-to-face appointment. When the agents knew that this was not just a cold lead, it was a warm handoff, a, a warm opportunity, they actually treated those leads with far higher respect. Of course. They knew they were far likelier to close. They weren't, mm-hmm. weren't going to have lead fatigue from it and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and our conversion rates tripled. I, I mean, literally tripled. Mm-hmm. With the same amount of leads that we were generating, they tripled. That was the real moment where our business really took off. So let's talk about that for a second for maybe the people that are watching right now, because maybe they're going to say, well... But that's what I do. And I haven't experienced the triple. So two things. Do you think it was A, the time, right? The, the, the year that we were in, still sort of early in this online lead generation world, if you will. Yeah. And or secondarily, do you think it was because it was someone else, not the agent? You have me calling for the agent to, to sell the agent on working with the agent. I, I think it's a combination. Or sell the consumer. I think it's a combination. I think a lot of it is still true today. The speed mm-hmm. to lead, yeah. the follow up. You know, if, if if my brother Aton didn't get a hold of him right away, because a lot of people still didn't answer the phone, yeah. he'd keep calling him. Yeah. Um, this is before we tried texting, which yes. works far better now. Oh gosh. And yes. now people prefer to be texted. Yep. And now that site, my agent finder, was uh, more generic in terms of we'll help you find the best agent in that area. Yes. So they were a little more open to speaking with us and giving us yes. information. So I think yeah. there was an element of that. Yeah. But that's when our business really took off, and and we actually raised venture yep. funding to keep scaling and growing it. And along the way, and we and we partnered with the best agents around the country yep. for the same reason that we were tied to the closings. We were making money when they closed them. So mm-hmm. we didn't want to just give our quality leads that we paid for exactly. to anyone. We gave them to top agents that we partnered with. These same top agents then started to say to us, this is now three, four years ago, they mm-hmm. started to say to us, hey, we, we love these leads. We love how warm they are, ready to go. I never get a bad number. I never get someone asking me who the hell I am. Why am mm-hmm. I calling? Yep. Buzz off. Yeah. And they said, uh, uh, these are warm, ready to go. And I love that they're ready to go. And and they said, but but you're just one small lead source and I'm getting you know, five, 10 leads from you a month, referrals, mm-hmm. but I'm getting another 100 or 200 leads a month from my Zillow, my Facebook, my website, all of my other advertising. Can Would we run? Can we run all? To call all of my <laughs> yeah, leads? Can yeah. We, and and by the way, we have a voicemail yeah. that that from a customer, from one of the first customers who who said that exactly. Yeah. Who's like, you know, I'm getting all these other leads. Would you guys be willing to to? Can I funnel all of my leads to you guys to qualify, and I'll pay you whatever you want, referral fee, yeah. money, whatever you yeah. want. 
and that was the light bulb that went off when we realized that the real problem we're solving is not the ability to generate a lead. It's no. the ability to to generate uh, and 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 create warm opportunities. I would even argue it's you save time and and a bunch of time. You save so no much cold time. calling. Yeah, uh, there's a lot no, of factors. No chase, 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 yeah. chase, chase. The only ones you're chasing are the I just went on a pitch. Right? They yeah. didn't list with me. I'm going to follow up on them. Yeah. I just showed them a couple houses. I got to follow up on them. Yeah. But all the other follow up was handled by somebody else. So, so that was, was brilliant. So that was the evolution where we said, well, now the big idea here is not that instead of just being another lead source that has a unique offering where our leads are just higher quality because yeah. we filtered out the job. Yeah. We can provide that lead qualification and engagement layer to the entire industry and really benefit, you know, raise all boats with it. Yes. And that's when we formed Agentology as a spinoff of that. And that became and quickly became the the main business for yes. us and really took off because now we could work with every agent in every market with any of their lead sources. And that really opened us up. Yeah. Um, and now we're going into mortgage into other industries as well. So before we get into Agentology, I want to talk to you just about being an entrepreneur. So were your parents entrepreneurs? My, my dad, yes. Okay. Yes. And yet they wanted you to be the first engineer of the family. You know, my- Are you the my, oldest? Yeah. Okay. Why is this best looking? All of the above. Yeah. 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 They, won't, they won't watch this. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> so, so why were they disappointed with you, like canceling engineering, econ, we know econ majors the, make more, blah, blah, blah. Like, so why they, were they, why were they upset about that? They were, they were, uh, excited about the electrical. I was always into science computers sure. and they really thought that, that, that was the path that I really did want. And they thought I left engineering because it was difficult. Yeah. Um, and because I, but actually, uh, I, I did well with it. I was getting A's. I was at UCLA. It was mm -hmm. one of the top 10 engineering schools yes. in the country. And, uh, but, but I left because I, I actually wasn't stimulated enough. Mm -hmm. I was doing a bunch of math and formulas and stuff, which yeah. I was very good at naturally. I got a mm -hmm. perfect SAT score and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. with, with, in the math section. Don't ask me about the literature section. Yeah. But, um, and so that was my strength. Right. Yes. And so they just felt I was kind of giving up on something that they felt I was giving up on for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Later they learned it was because my entrepreneurial spirit was so strong. Yes. I didn't want to be stuck in any lab. I wanted to go out and create new things. Yes. So what would you argue looking back over your career? What, are, what were two or three of the biggest mistakes you made along the way? Kind of knowing what you know now. H hiring the wrong people. Mm -hmm. And keeping them too long. Yeah. Um, Settling for mediocrity. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, you're only as good as your people. You, you, you could be S Steve Jobs, mm -hmm. but if you don't hire all the greatest people around you, you're not going to ever create Apple. Yeah. And, you know, that doesn't get enough attention out there. You, yeah. just, you just know the name. You know the Elon Musk, the yeah. Steve Jobs, yeah. whoever. Um, but it, it is truly the people. I, I credit our success to everyone around me. Yes. Um, it, 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 they are doing the work. You know, I, I'm at the top of leading on vision and, and, and keeping people accountable in execution. But, but, but at the end of the day, it, it is the right people in the right seats um, and for the right amount of time. And sometimes there's a perfect time for someone to get on the bus and off the bus. Yeah. What was the biggest hiring mistake you made? You don't have to say the individual's name. Maybe His name? Maybe, yeah. He's in this room. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, we, we hired a, a CTO yeah. far too early. Yeah. Um, because we wanted to become a tech company, right? Yes. What we were doing with engaging leads, it's not just to be a call center, it's to mm -hmm. bring technology to the space yes. and to create some automation. And, and so we wanted to bring some technology to the space. But what it did was, and my brother Avi is very, very technical, and, and I have mm -hmm. some of that, you know, from mm -hmm. my background. Um, but, but, you know, our, our board at the time felt, hey, you know, if you're going to be a tech company, you need a, a CTO, right? Mm -hmm. And the CTO came in hiring all the most expensive engineers in the world instead of being uh, a little more scrappy early yeah. on. And you have to be real lean, you yes. know, the lean startup. You have to be yes. super lean. This guy came and we were super happy to, to get him because he had worked at some of the best companies, big mm -hmm. known companies that you'd know. And um, and we were like, wow, I can't believe we got this guy. Mm -hmm. But but he, he actually made everything go far slower, mm -hmm. uh, o overloaded us with expenses we didn't need and put us into a dangerous position at some point. Yeah. So I, I think it's important to build from the foundation up that there are certain shortcuts that are not worth taking too mm -hmm. early. You're not ready for them yet. So it's fun for the, for the people that are listening right now, uh, you know, there's going to be new agents listening. To this. There's going to be CEOs of companies. There's going to be a lot of team leaders listening to this. So how do you judge when it's the right time to hire that next big person for your team? When do you, when do you know it's the right time? When it is so painful yeah. to not have them. Yeah. That is when, not yeah. when it's convenient yeah. Not when it feels like, well, that would be nice. That would yeah. be a luxury. 
it is when it's painful not to have them. Yeah. That, that's my take on it. Got it. I would argue too, maybe the pain is maybe it's similar. Mine is um, when no one, when everyone else's bandwidth is completely yeah. tapped out, but the addressable market is so enormous. That's the pain and, where you're and, not progressing. Yeah, you're not accelerating exactly. the pace. You're, yeah. You have projects that have been in the roadmap forever and you're like, when are we ever going to get to them? Everyone's spinning their wheels, maintaining exactly. the platform, yeah. not focusing, you know, you know, on, on the next. So I'm curious, you know, when you're, when you're creating a new division of your business or you're starting another venture, um, my hypothesis is unless I put someone's ass on the line responsible for running that whole thing, if, if I got too many people that are trying to fill in the holes to try and make it work with one maybe executive who kind of has their focus on it, I might as well throw all the money in the trash and burn it because it's never going to work. Like I've got that one person. What are your thoughts on that? So we, you know, my, my brother and I are co-CEOs, mm -hmm. right? We, uh, and so we, we have, we're kind of top heavy, if you will, at, at, at that level, but, but in sure. a good way. I, I focus more on the sales, marketing, finance side of the business. Yep. He focuses a lot on the product. And yeah. we have a product and success and, and, mm -hmm. and all of that. And, and we have really, really great executives that run each division. You know, yes. the, the executive that runs the whole concierge team. Break that down for salespeople, a real estate team like, you know, product and success versus sales and marketing for a real estate agent. Yeah. How would you, how would you define product and success for a real estate agent? So they get better understanding of what that means in case they're not in the tech okay. world. And so, just so, you're a, so, you, so you're a real estate agent, um, mm -hmm. or, or a team leader. A team. I would say it's more like a team yeah, leader, running a team. right? You're, ru you're running a team. It's who, who's in charge of making sure you're getting the right types of opportunities to your sales people. Yep. Who's tracking that they're actually closing them efficiently and yep. that, and that if one of your sales reps is not that you don't feed him more and more until he's trained up to, to, to be able to, to do that. Yes. Um, who is in charge of, of experimenting with some percentage, something new, something different, mm -hmm. something beyond the norm. Yes. You know, that's, you know, the creativity, the product. Yes. Um, who, who is in charge of the customer experience? Yes. Right. You know, right now it's just like, how many sales are you making? Instead of, well, what's the experience? Yes. When someone comes through our doors, what experience are we going to give them? It's mm -hmm. all about the experience. Yes. Um, you know, in, in terms of, you know, sales, certainly that would say that sales is, are the agents on the marketing side. You know, we have a CMO, I would say they have someone in charge of mm -hmm. maybe not even having to generate the leads, but, but buy from the right sources and yes. track them. Or even a director of marketing who's just facilitating yeah. listing launches or working with know, the agency, mail, et cetera. Exactly. Yes. Trying different channels, yeah. right. Diversifying the, the, the flow, yeah. the funnel. Um, and then as, as a team leader, you're really the CEO that, that, is, that mm -hmm. is there to manage expectations. And you have to set the proper guidelines and expectations mm -hmm. and keep people accountable. And it's sometimes really tough. You know, um, and I think agent, in the real estate world, people are very friendly because it's a people business. Yes. And it's hard. And, and I'm a friendly person. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not, I joke around all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it's tough to then discipline or give feedback, negative yes. feedback. Um, and so being able to, to, to know how to turn and, and, and have, a, that's one of the things I've had to learn is as much as I want to be like this with everyone, I have to keep a level of, but I still need you to perform. Yeah. You know, it's a and level of professional respect. It, it's a, yeah. Yep. And, and so that, that has made it easier for me to manage. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I think like, like to your point, they respect that as well. Yeah. Interesting. Now I, I definitely was interrupting him there. All right. So let me, let me go a totally different direction with you. Sure. I'm just going to ask you just your opinion. Cause you know, we both, we both work with a lot of amazing real estate companies, a lot of amazing teams. Um, what, what's your, in, what's your take on Amazon's deal with Realogy? What do you well, think is going to happen? Well, I, for, first of all, I, I, you know, Realogy has had, it has had its, you know, troubles. Yes. Right. There's a lot of new competition coming in and I think they're grasping for opportunities to, to, to remain where they're at and to try to bounce back up. Yep. They obviously recognize that Amazon has the most, you know, uh, influence in the world. Yes. To, to the consumers, everyone buying stuff for their home is buying it on Amazon. Yep. And, and, you know, although I think, you know, obviously that commission that, you know, up to 5,000 that, that Amazon gives, it's up to 5,000, right? Depends on yeah. the purchase price. Yep. It comes directly from the agent's commission. Mm -hmm. Um, at, at the same time, if it's a lead that, uh, they weren't going to have in the first place, is it any different than a referral fee that you're paying? Yep. You know, and so, however, with that being said, obviously they're chipping in. They're, yes. they're, they're coming in and they're taking, like you said on a previous you know, podcast, yeah. um, they, they're taking pieces of that pie. Yes. 
But I think agents have to and teams just have to accept it. There's no point in whining about it. No. Jeff Bezos doesn't give a crap. No. He's, and this is a test as far as he's concerned. And last time I yeah. checked, he's run about a thousand of these tests yeah. and some work. Yeah. Where's the fire phone, right? Yeah. So, so exactly. He's all about testing and he has a, and Jeff has a really, I call him Jeff cause we're, you know, yeah. um, he bros. keeps calling me, but I told him to buzz off. I'm with Tom, <laughs> but he, um, you know, he, he runs five-year tests for the most part. They're, they're five-year tests. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing is he doesn't allow any one quarter no. to affect the, no. the idea. He knows yeah. there's going to be ups and downs in seasonality and yep. learnings, and he gives everything the chance to succeed. And if after five years it doesn't, then, then they, they move on, and they don't, they don't look back. Yeah. You and I are on the same page, and then just to my two cents is I do believe – uh, there's a percentage of consumers that are going to go there and going to fill out that form. And that lead is not going to be from their database. They're going to get somebody that maybe is in the database of any other brokerage in town. So yeah. that's a huge advantage. And most agents will pay a 25 to 35% referral fee any day of the week for a quote unquote easier transaction. I think part of the challenge that some people are facing, and we, you know, we did talk about it in a previous podcast. So, so let's talk about it now. There are, there's, you know, 35 ish sites. Yeah. Agentology is one of them. Like if they choose to have you guys nurture their leads, they're going to pay a fee for that, a percentage yeah. of their transaction. Many are arguing that that could end up being 15 to 20% of every transaction yeah. in, in the U S for yeah. all my friends around the world. We're talking the U S right now that are running through one of these sites that agents are now paying a referral fee on. So, so the question becomes like, what do you think an agent should do to at least protect their database from going to those sites. Well, I, I think the most important thing that you need to do is be more in touch with all your customers. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's it, the best example of this to the other extreme, and I'll, I'll bring it back to this yeah. is that it, this, this I forget the exact stat, but something like eighty eight percent of people say they would use the same real estate agent again. Mm -hmm. Only eleven percent do. Yeah. The reason is no one follows up. Yep. No one's staying in touch and building yep. those relationships. And many of them leave the industry. Yeah, many of them leave the so industry. It's a combination that's, of the two. That, that's fair. Yep. Um, and so I, I think it's about whoever provides the most value mm -hmm. over time. I, I don't I, I don't know how much it, every consumer out there is now going to demand a five thousand dollar rebate. Yeah. By the way, there's a tons of rebate offers now. Yes. It's direct cash back. You don't even have to spend it on Amazon. And this wasn't the first time we've yeah. seen this. I mean, yeah. you know, Lowe's did a deal. Home yeah. Depot did a deal. I mean, like, so we, we've seen all these things before. There's, you know, discount. There's rebate brokers yes. that give you half your commission exactly. back. And that's even more than 5K. And there, and by the way, their market share is like exactly. that. Exactly. So, so I, I think, you know, all of these guys, including, you know, the open doors and everyone out yes. there, they're going to take a little snippet. And like you said, it's going to add up to 20, 25% of, yep. of the, of, of the Potentially, commission. potentially. Yeah. Well, I just want to correct. Agentology does not take any commissions anymore. Okay. We, I wanted to couple, clarify that. A because... couple of years ago, we, we got out of that because yeah. we didn't want to touch that. Yeah. So we, we don't and touch I think commissions. most people didn't know that. And yeah. I was going to ask you that. Yeah, so yeah. thank you for clarifying. <laughs> yes. But, but, but we're very, you know, because uh, we, we understand the pressure there. Yeah. And so we, we don't, we don't want to deal with yeah. that. Um, Art, by the way, my referral network, probably a thousand ish referrals a month. Yeah. No referral fees. Nice. And everybody says to me, oh my God, Ferry, you could be charged. Just charge 5%, charge 7%. I'm like, they're my clients. Yeah. Right. If I can that's make coaching value. free for them through referrals, like that's a no brainer. Yeah. And by the way, that's, that's a perfect example of something you're doing with yeah. your customers to yeah. continue to give them value. Exactly. And, and so that's what people need to do with, with their database. Yes. Their database. People always tell me I have 30,000 people in my database. <laughs> I go, okay. Yeah. How, um, many, how many actually know you? <laughs> none of them, right? Yeah, four. Like, yeah, exactly. So it, it's, how many of those mm -hmm. have actually engaged? You yeah. know, at, when you're running a business, one of the things you're tracking is, um, you know, engagement. And so if you're using a marketing system like a Pardot or Marketo, yeah. one of these that many agents may not be as familiar with, but in, in let's put that in agent terms, like, you know, KV core, boomtown, commission yes. Inc., et cetera. Yeah. similar. Exactly. Great, great companies yeah. you just mentioned. And they, um, they will score leads, yes. right? How many times did they click on a property recently? Yeah. How many, did they open your mm -hmm. recent blog? They're yeah. scoring the lead. Yeah. And so based upon their behaviors when they're on your website yeah. or looking at leads, you yeah. get or behavioral, at behavioral signals yes. that signal, Hey, someone is more and more ready, more interested. That's who you need to pay attention to and make sure mm -hmm. you're reaching out to them. Yeah. The problem is, is most people don't, they just, they see, they have these powerful systems, but they don't do anything. Yeah. They don't take action on yeah. those. I don't know how many agents are out there logging in every day saying, these are people that my CRM yes. recommended I reach out to. They yes. don't because they, they, they're, there's, there's still a fear of cold calling or reaching out and they feel it's cold it's calling, even, even though it's in their calling. database. Exactly. They're in my database and I'm yeah, cold yeah. calling them. Yeah. So, you know, I, 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 the most important thing is how can you continue to deliver value mm -hmm. authentically? Yeah. And not just ask for referrals 
Oh, I love 100%. referrals. I hate seeing that. Oh, send me your referrals. I people, love referrals. People that have that on their cards should throw all those cards in the trash. <laughs> yeah. By the way, can you throw mine out after this? Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's inauthentic. It is. It, well, no, it's become a marketing campaign versus, hey, I built my business on referrals, right? Yeah. Like if I had that conversation with you one-on-one, -on -one, I get it. You're trying to scale it by putting it on your card. So the question it, is- it's, it's, it's like the shark has blown or whatever that little, whatever that phrase yeah. is, right? Yeah. I don't think something that's like it, that. but something about a <laughs> that's shark. not even ba close. Baby shark. Um, jump, uh, jump the shark. <laughs> jump, you got to jump yes, the shark. Yes, yes, yes. Wait, whose podcast is this? All right, keep going. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the Tom Ferry Show, Tom. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's let's switch gears. What do you think about uh, what do you think about Redfin and Open Door? You know, I I, I I'm a I'm a big fan of all these companies. Yeah. As much as they might disrupt the industry yeah. and a lot of the customers and and even my business, I, sure. I'm still a fan of of innovation and progress. Yes. And so I, I think they're doing great things. I think, you know, uh, Glenn Kellerman and, mm -hmm. and, and Eric Wu, mm -hmm. I, I mean, they're really smart guys, smart guys. really smart guys, yep. obviously really well funded. Yep. Redfin's doing some amazing things. You got to yep. give it to them. They, yep. they have, I, uh, I think one of the nicest search experiences. Mm -hmm. um, I, they've created the, one of the most consistent, consistent experiences because they went out and said, we're going to make everyone an employee. Exactly. That took guts and they, mm -hmm. they've done it and they've yep. had a lot of backlash, but you know, I, I heard uh, at one of the recent Inman, someone kind of yelling at at Glenn, saying something like, "Well, you're uh, you're getting rid of agents, you know." And he's like, "What are you talking about? I employ thousands of agents." Yeah, it's like three thousand yeah. agents. Yeah. And so there's this misconception yes. um, that anytime something is being innovative, it's disrupting, it's getting rid of agents. Yeah. Uh, no, not true. It's simplifying a process. Yeah. No one's goal is to get rid of agents. The goal is simplify a process. Yes. And if that came along and there's an, a place you can eliminate an agent action, so be it. But the, the, the goal is not the hatred of agents and just trying to get rid of them at all costs. That's not the goal. The goal is creating a more simple, efficient, quick process to buy home in, in a less painful way. It's a very painful process today. Yes. And it very should emotional. be disrupted. So so let's talk about agentology. So how does agentology do that? Like what is this for the person that doesn't know, right? Maybe they're going to Google right now while they're watching this. What does agentology do? What is your purpose? We are here to help real estate agent teams and, and mortgage professionals mm -hmm. engage, qualify, and nurture their leads. Mm -hmm. As simple as that. So how does that process work? I mean, we were kind of describing it earlier. So any lead or? Any, any lead. So you're a real estate team, mm -hmm. a broker, whoever you are, mm -hmm. you're generating leads from all these different sites. You can integrate those sites directly with Agentology so that we receive those leads instantly in real time. Mm -hmm. as, soon as, as soon as someone clicked on the form saying, I'm interested. Boom. Boom, it comes into our system. Our system immediately begins to engage through mm -hmm. SMS, begins mm -hmm. to engage that customer. Texting, yeah. Exactly. Hey, 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 Bob, this is Alex from the blank, blank real estate team. Saw you were interested on this property. Um, when's a good time to connect? Yeah. Uh, is now a good time for a quick call? Mm -hmm. Right, we actually leverage text to get people on a call. Yes, as opposed to just cold calling yeah. effortless, effortlessly because yeah. today no one answers. Yeah, so we leverage text to call, and then we call them, and then they answer ninety mm -hmm. percent of the time when, mm -hmm. when they say call me. Yes, so um, so we 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 leverage a combination of 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 text through automation. And then as soon as they engage, our human concierges jump in and carry forward a conversation, asking them a few more questions like, what's your time frame? Have you been pre-approved? What other areas are you interested in? What's mm -hmm. important to you? Mm -hmm. um, and then we set up a, an appointment or a live transfer directly to their real estate agent. And so what it does is it allows that, that huge flood of leads to be narrowed down to qualified opportunities that are ready and, and primed to, to, to do business. You're moving people through the funnel as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible. Exactly. How many leads would the average agent that you guys are working with generate like per month? You and know, be disqualifying some people watching this or qualifying some. Yeah, you know, we have we have a lot of different kind of cohorts, the type of customers, sure. but 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 the, our core business comes from teams mm -hmm. who are generating a hundred plus, some thousands of leads sure. a month. Okay, so someone that has fifteen leads a month, this is probably not no. the ideal service. They should answer their phone. They should text. So let's talk about that for a second. Texting. What have you found to be the best texting scripts when that lead comes in? I mean, I imagine with thousands and thousands of these on a weekly basis, yes. you guys on have a figured daily, out what On a works. daily basis. Yeah, daily. Yeah, yeah, millions of leads a year that we handle. Yeah. So, so we... Um, We've tried everything, and, and yeah. we're 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 data driven, yeah. right? It's not emotional; it's data yeah. driven. We're trying; we're A/B testing things yeah. all the time. So this yeah. changes. Yes, we. I'll tell you, we used to call everyone first. Yeah, and that got you know this level of engagement. Yeah, right. Then we started texting people first, and that got this level of engagement. Mm -hmm. Now we text people and offer to call them. Yeah, on the text. Yeah. Now, now they don't think it's a bot. Yeah. And then 
that is the highest level. I mean, we're engaging over 90% of consumers mm -hmm. within the first 24 hours with these, uh, with, with, with these uh, attempts, with yes. this strategy. So now, leverage, is it a bot or do you actually have people standing there? You know, it's, it's not, they're not doing this, but they're doing the it through their first, computer. The first, the, the, what, what's automated is the initial SMS campaign yeah. that goes out to get them to engage. Yes. So, you know, hey, hey, Bob, this is blank, blank with the blank team. You saw you were interested in this property. Is now a good time for a quick call or would you prefer to text? Yeah. That is our most successful okay, first text. Say it one more time. Hey, Tom, this is David with the blank, blank banana real estate team. Thank you. Saw you were interested in this property on our website. Yep. Is now a good time for a quick call or would, would you prefer to text? What we're doing there is two very, very important things. Break it down. Number one is we're giving... Uh, the consumer, the, the, we're, we're letting them know this is not a bot because we just offer to call them. Yeah. A bot doesn't do that. No. And by the way, we'll call them. Um, secondly, we're giving the consumer choice, probably the most important. We're yep. giving them choice. Not everyone wants to pick up the phone and talk to you. No. In fact, most people are at work yep. or slacking something off, you know, while they're engaging online and filling out forms. They're not yeah. just waiting for people to call them. I love how you said Slack, not email. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, so we, Give the consumer choice. Mm -hmm. That is so important. That yes. already sets up the tone for a good conversation. Yeah. By the way, when we used to call people and they picked up, they were annoyed. Yes. They weren't happy we called yes. them. They were annoyed because yes. they weren't ready and now they kind of want to get off. Mm -hmm. Now when we say, can we give you a quick call or would you prefer to text? When they say, call me, which is, by the way, still about 30, 35% of the time, they pick up the phone and they're happy that we called yes. them. Yes. It's such a better conversation. It's permission marketing. E exactly. Yes. And when they say text is better, we start texting right away. Yeah. And we're going through our questions, which, by the way, are fully customizable. Our customers, our agents, can customize the questions that are most important to them to qualify a lead. What do you find to be the most the, the, the most common questions that people are asking in those texts? You know, what, what are your agents' Time frame? Yeah. Are they working with anybody else? Mm -hmm. And uh, price range and neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. so Pre-approved. Yeah. Some of the most basic ones you would think. Sure. Uh, we try not to ask so many that we give the lead like, oh God, when's this going to be done? Yeah. Like next page, next page, or when yeah. you're filling out a form online. But I mean, but is it in one text where they're saying, you know, David, thank you so much. Well, let me just ask you, you know. We go one question at a time. time it's frame? conversational. We're, we're empathetic. It. That's, and and that's it's key. real. And it's, this yep. is, this is tech plus humans. Yes. Humans are having real conversations. As soon as that lead engages and says, text me, it's, hu it's a hundred percent human. U.S. based, all in San Diego, mm -hmm. and and these are you know really highly trained empathy people who really care and know yeah. how to talk to people, and so we're there to, to listen. If they say something, we'll we'll comment on it. We won't just robotically ask the next question. We'll we'll giggle about whatever they said or tell them, hey, we understand, or I'm sorry to hear that. You know, if they're going through a divorce, whatever the case sure. is, we're empathetic. Yeah, um, and and that's really really important. We we truly believe and a bot can't do that. A bot can't do that, yeah. not yet. Um, and we we truly believe that. You know, uh, humans alone are, are inefficient. Mm -hmm. Technology alone is inauthentic. Mm -hmm. We need to bridge the two. And what we're say trying to do at Agentology... Say that one more time. Humans alone are inefficient. Mm -hmm. Technology alone is inauthentic. Yeah. We want to bridge the two, and that's what we believe will create the most impactful uh, conversational experiences that really connect with people. So give us some success rates. Like, just talk about, like, just data. So I give you 100 leads. What's going to happen on average to those 100 leads? So obviously, like how many appointments am I going to get? How many soft handoffs? Maybe not appointments like this, just the soft handoffs. Yeah. So obviously it really depends on lead source. Of course. Right. I mean, you got such a wide array yeah. of, of quality Fa and Facebook, and, Google, yeah. Zillow, but, but know. the higher performing sources are more pro what we call proactive leads. Yeah. People out reaching out on sites like Zillow, realtor.com. Yeah. Really. Bottom of the funnel stuff. Yeah. They're, they're much more, you know, ready to go. Mm -hmm. We we're able to engage about 90% of people. There's always mm -hmm. a small percentage with bad numbers, wrong info, things like that. But 90% yeah. of people engage, even yeah. if they tell us to buzz off, they'll engage. Yeah. Um, overall, those sites, roughly 45 to 55% of them are, are what we call qualified, meaning we had a conversation with them and they were interested in connecting with the agent as a next step. Yeah. So um, that's a really high rate. That's really um, good. And this is about two to three times uh, higher of a rate than people who do this on their own because they don't have a consistent process. They're yeah. not engaging quickly. They're not 24 seven. They're not following up. We, we follow up for six months. If we can't reach someone we're yeah. following up, we do not give up. Yeah. Um, and we are continuously training our scripts and our system to what's the best time to, to reach back out. Right. Yeah. But what's working. Cause we're dealing with data scale. driven, data driven. We have the scale. Yeah, and so we're looking at the data. This is the sciency part of it. Yeah. The ology <laughs> yeah. part of agentology, which, which really allows us to 
get really, really good at what we do, which I don't think any one individual in-house assistant will ever get as good at. Yeah. ISAs, OSAs. That's right. You were kind of going there, but I, was. I mean, I have a lot of but clients that say, I like having my own person. We work with a ton of teams who have ISAs, yeah. but our system gives them leverage. Yeah. The idea is leverage, you know, give them leverage. Save time. Save time mm -hmm. and focus and not just time, but focus, focus on the, cus on yep. the customers who are going to transact. Don't waste time with the people who are going to blow you off that you're wasting a billion dials on trying to yep. get a hold of. Yeah. Instead, put that same amount of effort and energy into the people who are ready, who are raising their hand, who are interested. Continue to nurture the other ones through other means, through email, through content, mm -hmm. through retargeting. Yes. Um, however, you know, put your ISAs to work. Uh, and, 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 and really, most of our customers are big teams, and, and mm -hmm. they all have ISAs with, with us on, on top of that. So, but we give their ISAs leverage. So now we qualify a lead and their ISA starts setting up showings, starts setting up a drip, an MLS search, yeah. um, inviting them to their events, right? Sending them different relevant content about, you know, did you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 10, 10 things to know before you sell your home. Bingo. They're sending them that content and it's far more effective and relevant. And, and the other thing that we do, which is really power, powerful for the ISA, for the leads that we disqualify, you know, we qualify leads. These are the people who are interested. They mm -hmm. want to move down the funnel. They want to talk yep. to an agent. There's the other half or more, depending on the lead source. Sometimes it's 70% of people that are just disqualified from a certain lead source. Sure. They're just super early. They don't want to talk to anyone yet. We, every time we disqualify a lead, we bucket them into a reason. Mm -hmm. They already have an agent. They're renting. They're not interested. They don't have financing. They're relocating. We bucket them. And so what that allows the real estate team to do is then to appropriately nurture them. And market to them. And market exactly, to them. You know. Five mistakes to avoid when relocating or, yeah. 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 Or, or it's cheaper to buy than to rent now. Yes. Yeah. You know, so it allows them to more effectively nurture them long term as mm -hmm. opposed to, you know, spray in every direction, the same thing to everybody. Love it. Love it. So you've learned a lot when you think about millions of leads, right, over, you know, several years now. Um, what's your take on the future of real estate? Where do you think it's going to go? We talked to, you know, we, I had shared in an earlier podcast, we were talking about sort of the pie, right? That, you know, 88% of all real estate transactions controlled by agents. And there was the FISBO market and the yeah. sort of we buy ugly house market. And now everybody's looking at the iBuyer and the disintermediators, which are taking a referral fee on transactions. Beyond that, um, what do you think is going to happen to the real estate transaction? What do you think is going to happen to brokerage? Kind of just give me your insight on that. You know, I, I think- That's I think, a big, broad question. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I think one of the biggest changes overall that is mm -hmm. happening is the transaction is going to get easier, more transparent, mm -hmm. more consistent, more systematic, and just uh, transparent. You know, yeah. it, it's right now every escrow, every title, everything is so different Yeah, and it's super stressful. There's no state visibility. There's yeah. no visibility mm -hmm. into it. Where am I at in the process? I mean, yeah. certain companies have a better system, but frankly, it's not there. No. I think I think it's going to get short. The time frame will get shorter to be able to buy, mm -hmm. to even get you know pre-approved, pre-qualified, and to close a transaction. Yep. That all the money that's flowing into tech, it it it's to accelerate the transaction and facilitate more transactions in a faster, easier, more yep. transparent way. Yes. And so I I think fundamentally what that'll do is it, it'll 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 shorten or it, it'll decrease the amount of effort and time an agent has to spend to earn that commission, mm -hmm. and in turn. I think it's natural to assume that it's going to uh, uh, have a, a consequence on commissions. Yes. Less work, less effort, less commissions. But if you can, if you can close 50, 50 deals instead of thirty with the same or, amount yep. of effort, yep. You know, who cares if you make less if you're selling more and yes. if it's easier. So, what do you think? Before you talk about the brokerage side, what do you think is going to happen? What do, you, what do you think of the, the the superpowers of agents in the future when the transaction's done? You know, kind of I talked about like Amazon meets Uber meets Tesla. You know what I mean? Buy a hundred seventy thousand dollar car in five minutes. Yeah. When that happens, what do you think the agent needs to prepare for to be ready for it? You know, I, I, I there are so many different ways an mm -hmm. agent can kind of surpass that yes. that mountain. Yep. A couple, a couple of the most important ways I think they can do that is is one to continue to provide value after the transaction. You know, it, it's it, there's no more hit it and quit it. No. You know, I don't know if there's a family show, but um, it, it is now. Um, no, you know, it, it's, it's, you can't just make your commission and bounce. Are we editing that from the show? I'm just, I'm looking at my team like. There's no more. Yes. It's not a one we month stand. We got gotcha. you. Agents are used to one month stands and then they're done with you after escrow, right? Mm -hmm. And and so, no, I think I think the value has to continue. And so I think the the as a transaction gets easier and more facilitated and yes. with, through technology, 
the agent has to provide more value first of all, on the front of it, mm -hmm. with education, yep. with giving them insight that's not readily available, with giving trends, new buildings, new construction, new developments, new new uh, uh, schools, all of mm -hmm. that stuff that'll matter to the value. And then post-transaction, keeping in touch with, hey, um, might be a good time to refinance, yeah. even though if it's, agent's not going to make any money doing that, but you're yep. adding value. Yes. Hey, um, you know, there's there's a new, uh, did you know that this just got approved and it's going to build, it's going to be really cool. Yep. It, you're just giving more value yeah. post. So, you know, we always say, you know, from, from click to closing, yeah. right? And it's really from click to closing and beyond. It's a great insurance agent who says, like, we talk about like homes under management, right? How many homes do you have under management? Because, yeah. you know, you know, a percentage of them are going to convert every year. You never know which one it is, but you got to look at that body of all of your work and all of your customers yeah. the same way a life insurance salesperson is going to say, I want to nurture these relationships forever. Yeah. Where, you know, agents can provide value. Yeah. These are simple examples because yeah. they're coming up sure. top of my head right now. But, you know, hey, um, now that we sold your home, you may want to, you may want to consider, you know, replacing all your uh, light bulbs for, for these more efficient ones. Bingo. Uh, by the way, there's a new, uh, uh, in California, now there's a new incentive to place solar panels. Yep. You may want to look into that. Yeah. So, um, hey, have you considered zero scaping? Yeah. Right? All of that kind of stuff that comes post, it doesn't make you any money, but it continues to add a value, Bingo. which means it'll come around. And most of that, it, that's where you get referrals. Yeah. That's how you get referrals. Staying top of mind, being relevant, familiarity, all the things we talked about at the summit. All right. Future, last question. Yeah. Future of real estate brokerage. You know, I am a fan of all the brokerages. Mm -hmm. I love them all. I think they all have different offerings. And just like you have a lot of different hamburger options, you're always going to have different options yep, for, a lot for of brokers. Different flavors. Yes. Mm -hmm. I do, however, believe that the brokerages that figure out how to create a consistent experience are the ones who will thrive, mm -hmm. who create trust. We spoke about this at some point too. Yep. The, the ones who create trust equals consistency times time. Mm -hmm. You have to be consistent. And have a. This is why In and Out is successful. Exactly. This is why Carl's Jr. is successful because every mm -hmm. time you go, you get the same Western bacon cheeseburger, and it's delicious, and it tastes the same, and you yep. know what to expect. Yeah. Right now, with a lot of the brokerages, you get a different experience every single time, and the more that happens, the more they're frankly just going to become the clearinghouse for all the teams under them, mm -hmm. and it'll be a race to zero in terms of the commissions that they get from every deal. They'll start to get a hundred bucks per closing. Yeah. And you're going to see a lot of them fall off if they don't. And so it's how do you create a consistent uh, uh, experience and and build trust in that community so that there's value in the brand itself. That was a really good answer for all the people that are watching. And by the way, the same rule applies for you with your team and individually in your business. So David, thank you so much for sharing. It was super fun. Always get caught up. Thank you. You are such a, I mean, you have, you have such a great view of the industry because of millions of transactions, but all the different businesses that you've started, you and your brother. And I have not met your youngest brother. Yeah. Aton. Yeah. Am I saying that right? He's a little powerhouse. Yeah. Uh, Aton, Avi, and David. So yeah. what happened? Your, your parents went D and then said, no, we're going all A's. Like what? Aton's with an E. Oh, Aton's with an E. Okay. That makes me feel better. So it's all like right. the D-E-A. Yes. Got it. Got it. Got it. Love it. All right. Well, listen, <laughs> thank you again so much. Agentology guys, check them out. Make sure, uh, can they follow you on Instagram? Yeah. I know they can see, you know, the company on Instagram and on Facebook and everything else. MySpace. Um, MySpace. Bringing it back. Uh, Beluga. Do you remember Beluga? <laughs> no. What? No, that's, that's maybe your time. Wait, <laughs> how old are you? Wait a minute. My time. How old are you? I'm almost 22. Shit. No, I, I, <laughs> 38. All right, so we're close. I've got you by 11 years. <laughs> Beluga was a social site. It was out for about a week and a half, and I oh. had 400 people following me. Yes. Oh, nice. I had all 400 Friendster? on the site. Friendster? It was, I was on Friendster. Oh, yeah. Did you do Friendster? I did Friendster. You liar. I did. Really? For a bit, yeah. Yeah. Well, you were definitely MySpace. It's definitely your age. All right. We were trying to wrap this up, then we get more excited. All right. So, David, thank you. Follow him on Friendster, Beluga, and, of course, Instagram and all those other current sites. <laughs> Appreciate you, partner. Thank you, Tom. All Appreciate right. it. See you soon. Thank you.